Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this session. Uh, I am Kito Chen from Sci-Fi, and uh, for this session, I will share you this topic with you, uh, the hardware control flow integrator for the Resurfy. And uh, this is an interesting topic. I mean, it's covered a lot of different area, including the ISA, Tuochen, operating system and uh, some AVI issue. So I will try hard to tell the whole story within one hour, uh, if possible. Since my goal is for you to understand, uh, even if you don't have the security background, since what I expect is it's a tour train conference. So most of people may not have fully background around it. So I, I will try to wait, try try to tell tell everything to you. So first, I will give you a brief introduction to what is the CFI, and followed by a, some overview of the existing technology, and then I will introduce a mechanism for the RISC-FI and uh, the challenges and uh, the current AVI status, and uh, finally the tool chain implementation st status and uh, some plans. And uh, before anything, give a disclaimer here. Uh, I have put a lot of pictures here, but it's generated by AI, so there may be a lot of typo, but it's kind of by intention only for keep the original flavor of the AI generated picture. But one reason is, okay, I don't really know how to fix that in the right way. So yeah, I just keep the typo there. Yeah, so don't be surprised if you saw a very strange word. Okay, let, let's just AI generated the picture, yeah. And as I mentioned earlier, this topic has covered several areas. So it's impossible to just making it by me. And also it's, also it's not only done by sci-fi. So here is a list for the technology for, to the contribution of the individual and the, the companies in the slide. I am Kanban Sci-Fi, and this also have some contributors from Rebels and the Media Techs. Yeah. So Let's start to introduce what is CFI is. So, uh, so it's a technology to design to prevent the hack to hijacking your control flow to do some evil thing they want to do. And uh, we will also provide some introduction, uh, brief introduction around this, that, and also provide some example to demonstrate how hack attack your program. And uh, we classify the CFI into two different kinds. One is the forward and another one is the backward. Uh, the general idea is the forward is kind of like the scene for the indirect call, indirect jump or something like that. So it's, you, you, you could imagine it's kind of forward. So it's kind of called forward CFI. And the backward is something like the function returning to somewhere. So we called it backward. Yeah. Anyway, here is an example for a common control flow hijacking. Uh, it's called return oriented programming. Where is the control flow? Uh, hijacking by overwriting the stack, especially for overwriting the return address. Uh, here's the example call, but of course, this call is only for demo, so, so don't be too serious to treating this program. I mean, it's very buggy program. I mean, it's string copy without the, the buffer checking, so it may cause some buffer overflow, but that's what we want today. I mean, buffer for overflow to override the, the return address. And uh, again, don't do that in your normal daily work. I mean, using those functions without buffer checking or the ensuring the buffer size. So how does a hacker attack work in this example? You could imagine one thing is uh, the stack will be overwritten if your string is longer than 63, 
byte or character. So if hacker know the stack layout, hey, it's the it's just the return address put after the uh, the buffer. So hacker know, hey, I just make the input string longer enough to override the return string, so he can jump to anywhere he want. Okay, so the the the, the program is kind of controlled by the hacker now. Yeah, if you're, you you didn't do any protect for your uh, string compare uh, string string copy stuff. So, and the, the next one is the uh, jump orienting the programming JLP. Uh, it's similar to the last one, but slightly different. I mean, it contains a small jump table in the stack, and of course, it's kind of intentionally for all writing. I mean, because it's put in the uh, stack, so you could imagine we can do the similar thing like a less example. Okay, put a long enough string to, to override the jumper table. So again, a hacker can jump to anywhere he want. Yeah. Okay, of course you may say, hey, the there is some safer version for those string or memory functions. Don't use that. Just using that those safer function. They have something introduced in C11, and also some GDBC also provides some check the version. However, uh, I did uh, some quick grip within GCC. Yeah, the GCC source code. All GCC is still using the legacy one, I mean the basic version without the buffer checking. So what I want to emphasize is, okay, there is some safer version, but in this world, still a lot of legacy code base using the basic one without uh, the buffer checking. Of course, GDBC has provided some magic header file to replace your string copy with the string copy underlying check the version, if possible, yeah. But no, normally, most of the time, it's still using the basic version, I mean, unsafe version, yeah. So the second part, existing technology for the CFI. So uh, you could imagine the those stuff I mean, those attack there, so must have some technology to prevent the hacker to find, uh, find those stuff. So we have two major mechanisms to prevent that. One is the software, and another is hardware. Of course, there is more than those items I listed there for the software, but I only did list the three here, yeah. And uh, also the hardware, I only sh sh show you uh, the most popular architecture, I mean, for the x86 and the r 64 what they do, yeah. So, first, the software part. Uh, Client has provided several uh, synthesizer implementation for different kind of CFI, yeah. And uh, most of it come with two major limitations. Uh, first, it must compile with LTO. And the second, the closed DSO support is still under experimental. What's mean? I mean, uh, if your program is dynamic linking, the protection is kind of limited. Yeah, so far. Yeah, of course I didn't. There is still another thing called the KCFI, but I just didn't list it there. Yeah. So uh, we list the seven different type of the CFI sanitizer, but we only focus one because most of the concept is similar. So I just introduced the most simple one. Here, we try to pass the function point and invoke that within the function. So how do we ensure the pointer is maybe the function pointer? Okay, let me show. It's a way I are. I know it's GNU conference, but sorry. Oh, there is no GCC implementation yet. Yeah. 
But anyway, I, I believe that's simple enough to read. I mean, the, the only thing we care is the LVN type test. I mean, you, you, I guess you can guess what it means. It does some evil thing. I mean, the IR is trying to do some type of checking. Yeah, OK. So let's jump to the limitation. Uh, the, the, the limitation I mentioned before, I mean, so why it's require LTO? Because as you know, C and C++ is not dynamic language like Python. I mean, it's harder to tell uh, our G is what come with what kind of type, and a function pointer is, is come with what kind of type. You never know in C language or C++ language in normal, I mean, especially for long time. Of course, you can do something very aggressive. I mean, you build a table at the wrong time to store all address and try to look up that. But you could imagine that would come with very high uh, performance penalty and some memory consumption. So no, Elbrand isn't implemented that in that way. It's implemented in some more evil way, I mean, uh, LT, LVN did some LTO to analysis to make sure this pointer could reach which function. And uh, this operation, I mean, this analysis need to do some link time application, I mean, because he need to collect all possibility. Yeah, and after the LVN collected all possibility, he generated some interesting uh, checking there. Uh, he just checking the address is located the range in the expected the function instead of doing the real type of checking here. So again, it's kind of trade off in the implementation. I mean, because it's it's harder to do a real type of checking, so he doing that in in some uh, address checking way. That's why LTO is re required for most of the CFI sanitizer, yeah. So how does the CFI sanitizer prevent the attack? Uh, CFI sanitizer can prevent some uh, attack, which we showed the example earlier. The program will abort if the jump target is not uh, what we expect. Since uh, the, the program, Sorry. <clears throat> we'll try to check, insert a sound checking at those function and make sure you are jumping into the expected one. So if the stake got overwritened, the jump address has been changed, then it will abort soon since the program has inserted some logic to check in the, hey, it's come, come from the expected place. Okay, so the next mechanism is a uh, stake canary, or sometimes we will call it stake protect, but actually I more like the stake canary name. I mean, the image is much more <laughs> cute. Yeah, the idea is simple. Uh, put a canary on your stake and uh, check it before return and abort if the canary seems like wrong, what's mean? Let me give you a more concrete detail. Uh, using this example we showed before. Uh, okay, it will get the canary by the stake check guard and push to the stake and put here. I mean, before the buffer and the, the written address. So. And uh, and then uh, you will the, the compiler will, will insert some call to make sure uh, the value is unchanged before return. And if anything wrong, I mean mi mis mismatched, it will call to another check fail function and abort the program. So how it prevent the state uh, state overwriting? You could imagine if you overwrite the buffer, then you will 
also corrupt the stake canary in most of the case, unless the hacker know how stake canary look like. Otherwise, it's high possibility will just kill the canary, and then the program will terminate soon. Since yeah, we have checked, we have catched the the, uh, the attack. Okay. So let me introduce one more uh, software mechanism. Here's another common uh, mechanism. It's called the software uh, shadow stake. It's GCL when implemented that in some option, the sanitizer equal to shadow code stake. It's in theory, it's better than the stake canary. ARGC4 has implemented that, and uh, it's just need one more regist. And uh, just give you some history around here is X actually x86 has implemented the shadow software shadow stack before, but uh, some developer found some security issue. I mean, even enable the shadow stack is still not safe enough for x86. So it's kind of removed from the most of compiler implementation. And uh, the idea is that we will prepare another stack than the normal stack. And you will push the address to both stack. I mean, the written address will two copy, one in the normal stack and another one in the shadow of stack. And uh, pop up before return and do a check to make sure they are same. If they are mismatched, okay, they must have something wrong Yeah, here. So you could imagine, uh, let's provide some better than the stake canary. And why it's better is because if uh, your program has some indirect uh, access pattern, I mean, he can just Jump, uh, right across the stake canary, then the stake may or may still taken. And also, uh, stake canary has been proposed many years, many decades, one or two decades. So already some people developed some techn technical to bypass that, but uh, I'm not a security guru, so I, I, I can tell what the mechanism is but there is just some mechanism for there. However, uh, for the shadow stake, uh, if hacker want to overwrite your return address and uh, then jump to your to what the address he expect, he need to write the address into two places with the same value. One copy is the normal stake and another one in the shadow stake, which makes the scene much more harder. Yeah. So, that's why it, we we say it's better than the uh, the stack canary. But of course, everything has price. Uh, for example, the ARG64 require one more register for holding the shadow stack. So yeah, it's kind of again it's trade off. Yeah. And then now, uh, since you know the survey mechanism mostly by in, insert some. Uh, code by compiler or tool chain is made come with some overhead, either the runtime overhead or the core size or mem runtime memory overhead. So here is some how a mechanism has proposed to protect the control flow hijacking. One most common thing in, in this world is the Intel CET extension. I mean. I believe for most of the, uh, at least for most of the distribution has enabled it by default. Uh, actually, that's a question I was going to ask Florian. <laughs> uh, are shadow stacks on in Windows? Uh, yeah, shadow stacks are on uh, in the sense that they're compatible, but they still on in the application. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I mean, let, that's what I expect. I mean, that's why I presentation here, since I would like to chat with some of you guys, especially you, to make sure all detail, especially we are, uh, we will plan trying to upstream this year. I mean, I know it's kind of already late this year, but we, we are start trying to push everything upstream. So I know something should be used by a multi different targets. Like a kernel, I know some uh, our friend from the Rebels has tried pushing some common interface in the kernel space. So I, I remember he has already proposed some common PRCTL between different targets that can be used for x86 and ARGC4. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Mm hmm. Thanks for your info. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let me introduce a few more detail around the Intel CET protect uh, extension. Uh, again, it's compared to the survey one. It's uh, offering lower runtime overhead than the survey solution. Yeah. What's mean? Just give some concrete example here. For the x86, the hardware shadow stack, uh, it provides some special uh, memory region dedicated for the shadow stack. It cannot access by the normal raw store, only accessible by some special shadow stack operation instruction. So you could imagine it makes very, very hard to the hacker to change the content of the shadow stack. And of course, the x86, okay, it's a CISC uh, style ISA. So it's already pushed proper the return address as the code and the return instruction. So yeah, this table show two identical quadrant, I mean, with and without the shadow, shadow stack. Since it's just require uh, ISA update to update the to enable the behavior for the shadow stack. So yeah, 
the the code is an unchanged, but actually it's not really unchanged. It will output a few more uh, GNU property as the pro uh, as the object file to mark us. Hey, this object is safe for enable the shadow stack. Yeah. And uh, the next mechanism is the uh, indirect branch tracking. Uh, any indirect call or indirect jump must target on to the ENDBR instruction. Otherwise, it will cause a fault. Uh, and you could imagine this could prevent the program jump into some middle of the function. So it's kind of limited your uh, entry point for those indirect jump or indirect branches, uh, which make the hacker harder to find a possible sequence for his attacking. Yeah. And, uh, okay, I ARC64 has provided similar extension like S86, and I, I, I doubt I don't have enough time, so I just say, hey, the BTI is equal to the IBT and the GC is like the shadow stake. And of course, ARC64 has provided a few more interesting secure uh, stuff, but okay, it's out of scope for today. Then the third part is kind of most important thing today. Uh, what the hardware mechanism has provided by the Resurfy. Uh, Resurfy has provided two new ISA extension for CFI, shadow stake and the landing pad. And uh, you may feel, okay, why let things like uh, all others, especially for the x86, because the ISA is developed by the same people. <laughs> I mean, the one who write the spec for the Resurfy is also the same one for the for for the x86 uh, CET extension. Yeah, same people. But not identically. Of course, it's come with some enhancement. So let me tell what's the difference. First, the shadow stake. Okay, it's similar to x86 this is shadow stake. A special memory for the shadow stack is only accessible by some special uh, instruction. But, okay, Resurfy is a uh, risk ISA, okay, in theory. Don't for, just forgot the vector extension, yeah. It's risk ISA, so uh, it's, every instruction should be simple. So pushing the power to the shadow stack must express it rather than the implicitly than the x86. So what mean? If you compile, pro com compile without the shadow stack, it will have two instructions for store the return address to the stack, and then restore the return address to the stack. And for the shadow stack, it will insert two more instructions. One SS push, shadow stack push, and uh, another one SS pop check. The SS pub check is doing the shadow stack path and also doing the checking. I mean, it, it will check in the T, T0 register with the, the value come from the uh, shadow stack. And it will abort or write some uh, fault if the value is mismatched. Yeah, that's the difference between the x86. But yeah, anyway, the concept is the same. Okay, sorry. Does, does it, so normally you're using our, uh, array register for return. So when that check with the shadow stack, does that need to be running in T0 or is it, uh, is it just basically recording which register that shadow stack is popping down? Ah, okay, you capture the key scene. It's actually is not mandatory to use in T0, but we are implemented that in that way is prevent you, we are trying to prevent using the same register as I, in this case, to prevent some case, I mean, yeah. So you're trying to avoid, like, just using whatever was left in the register already. Yeah, 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 let, let, let's, uh, the, the idea, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh -huh. Yeah. It, it probably doesn't matter architecturally, it might. <laughs> yeah. So there are paths in micro architectures which know that a direct through RA is a return, so the way to offer return 
Yeah. 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 Well, and, and the, the question I have here, you know, um, what happens if, so are these in the no op space, these new instructions? That's an interesting question we will discuss later. <laughs> and, and the reason I have, let's, let's pretend that, we, that, that they're in no ops. <laughs> this isn't going to work anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And by the way, so in the ISA menu has suggest you T0 as an alternative return address. So that you won't break the return address stack in from the hardware. Yeah. That's why choosing T0. Yeah. Okay, same. Yeah, I was wondering if you could actually run the uh implement code on the CPU that doesn't have to plug the Yeah, kind of the same path I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I will have a short slide to discussion this this is yeah it is kind of biggest issue around the risk of five so <laughs> let me talk later. <laughs> Okay, the next one is the landing page. It's similar to the Intel IBT, uh, but it's come with another new thing. I mean, it's come with a label. Uh, it's the landing page is instruction. I mean, like the, oh, I, I forgot the, what the instruction x86, but the, the same one. It's come with a 20 bit label. It's further reduce the possibility of attack. I mean, without the label, you can jump into every uh, entry of the function. But now, if you have label, it feels limited. The label is into a small set. I mean, for example, uh, it, it's well checking the label to ma make sure it's matched. Otherwise, it will cause some fault. So, for example, it's using label one. It can only to jump to those function label with one, so it provides more more safe, yeah, and reduce the possibility of the attack, yeah. And also, it's required for byte alive for the landing page is because, uh, Resify, uh has provided the short instruction which is two byte, but the normal instruction is four byte. So in theory, uh. You may find a four byte sequence in the middle of the two four byte instruction. In theory, yeah, it's low possibility, but not a zero. So that's why it comes with this constraint. It require your landing page to put in a four byte alignment. Yeah, so let's kind of further pro protect the attack. And the song gives some example. You will put the label in the T two register. And then do a indirect jump, and here if a landing page, it will send label. Okay, match. It's fine. And if jump to a place with different label, it will just cause a, a highway fault. Yeah. And if you jump to some place, no landing page, program just fault. <laughs> okay, good question. I have mu much more slide for that because it's really complicated issue I want to resolve. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, and uh, for for a few more things, it provides a special value. Zero is a universal label. It will disable the label value checking. It's kind of necessary because Imagine something in the dynamic linker. There is a lazy binding. So it's, it's a lazy function, lazy symbol resolver here. So who will jump to there? I don't know. Everyone could take. So we must have something like that to suppress the 
uh, label tracking, but still has pr provided a minimal protection from it. That's why we have a universal label here. And another one is the uh, survey guarded jump. I mean, typically we use T2 to hold the label uh, and then check the label. But if you put your address into T2 and jump with that, it will call the, it's, we will call it later a survey guarded jump here. It will surprise uh, to all the landing page mechanism. Why? It's kind of used for some case you you are make, you are pretty confident it's safe. Give some uh, concrete examples. Okay, the jumper table is come from read only section, so it should be okay. Okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be used something for that. Otherwise, I mean, it's hard to tell which label should be used. Yeah. yeah. I understand the beginning why the label is needed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so I, I think this problem is, let, let, this question is more like how we generate the label. So just give a few more backgrounds. The label is generated at the compilation time rather than the link time. Yeah, and uh, I will introduce more detail mechanism around it. Could answer you what, what happened around the label. Yeah, then let's require some link time optimization, which will make the uh, implementation much more complicated. We we have tried it at the at the very beginning, and we found uh, okay, it's not easy, especially for dynamic linking. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we try another way. I mean, the function sequential base the according the function argument and the return type to decide the, the label. And I will ta talk the detail later. Yeah. And again, we pre uh, we, why we prevent using assign the label during the link time? In theory, that can provide a better security. I mean, since uh, during the linker time, you may know the exactly set which you will jump and assign a unique label to that. Yeah, but again, the implementation complexity will rise a lot. Yeah, so that's why we didn't go that way so far. Yeah. Ho hopefully, this answers your question. Okay. <laughs> I, I saw your face still some question mark, but okay, let, let me go. <laughs> let me, we, we can chat it later. Anyway, uh, okay, the next part, the challenge for the resize CFI. Uh, okay, 
the two big challenges here. One is the big world compatibility. Second one is the labeling scheme, how we assign the label. Yeah, the, those both of them are very hard issue. First is the compatibility issue for the survey side. The major problem is, oh, OK, how we deal with the existing binary and the shared library in with those stuff? I mean, fortunately, we are not the first one. So we learned from the x86 and the LGC4. I mean, we just add the GNU property and to let the dynamic linker to decide it should enable or not. I mean, the dynamic linker will check in all the dependency during the dynamic link time and uh, disable that if any dependency didn't satisfy. Of course, the policy can be changed by some uh, GVST tunable option, but anyway, the drop default behavior was something like that. And I believe that match what the latest proposal in the SATCC page. I mean, that's what we learned from. Yeah, <laughs> OK. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, sorry. Let... You're saying that you disable in language pass if any of the dependencies doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. But why can checks remain the same as when an executable uh, calls the function which is in itself because it has been read in language pass, so the function will be called. It's yeah. So there you can keep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I, what I mean turn off the is the turn off the mechanism to, for all binary and the, for this list. Yeah. Not 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 just the part of this shared library. No, it suppresses all the mechanism at the wrong time for this process. Yeah. It's process based to enable the shadow stack and or landing page. Sorry. Mm -hmm. By the way, we don't have those bits in the page table like ARG64. I mean, so we, we can either disable all or enable all. Yeah, as we have for resupply. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, it's uh, to be on if all dependent libraries are fulfilled with Shadow Stack. What happens if someone does like a DL open for a library that doesn't? Mm -hmm. Good question. We will have checking during the deal open, but again, there is provided a, a GDVC tunable option. I mean, default, default behavior is if you already enable that, a deal open will fail that if you are trying to open a, yeah, an object not supposed to that. And another option is, okay, if we're trying to open one not supported the shadow stack, Okay, disable that. <laughs> yeah, it's one possibility. But of course, in current uh, kernel implementation, we also provide uh, some mechanism to lock. I mean, to prevent a user to disable by themselves. Yeah, we in the kernel, kernel, current kernel implementation, we also provide that mechanism. Yeah. Okay. Let me move on. Okay. 
the next big issue is uh, how we compatibility. Okay, the push path instruction is defined in a new optical space, which called the uh, ZI map. Um, ZI is kind of named from the research I can mention, and the uh, NOP is called uh, maybe operation, which means it could be a uh, NOP non-operation if disable something or un unsupport something. However, that optical space didn't exist in, in the world for, I mean, in current all research by Huawei. So if we are trying to execute some shadow stake push path operation on your research board for now, okay, it's called the illegal instruction. Okay, so what's the solution? Actually, I, 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 seriously, I didn't have good solution so far. So only two bad solutions. So one, provide multi-lib. I mean, compile your library twice, one with the shadow stake and the one with no, but you could imagine <laughs> the distro guy will be very unhappy with that. <laughs> double time, double size, okay. <laughs> oh, the, the, the on, only possible way is, okay, it, I, I, I don't think it's the really a solution. It's kind of, oh, okay, waiting time to fix it. Since in the latest ResurFi profile, we call the, uh, the RVA23, require the, the, the I map as mandatory extension, but it's kind of ironically, I mean the name, called the 23. It's 24 now, but it's still on the way of the ratification, but I believe we will ratification soon. So what we expect is maybe two or three years later, this will become implemented in all research by Huawei, in theory, yeah, that's what we hope. So I know it's really <laughs> ideally for the distro guy. I already saw your face, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> yeah, so in theory, yes, but I don't know why the ISA folks still decide using new optical space here. I mean, for for give a practical example, the landing pad making engine, they are all using the NOP optical core space for the current ISA. So landing pad can be compiled or enabled for now, it's fine. But for shadow stake, no, not not the same scenario. So it's really big issue. Okay. As a tool chain guy, I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but what I want to say is okay, do you aware there is any research hyper in the world now? Have that extension? Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, again, I am kind of one of the RBI members, so I will optimistically to say, hey, one or two years later, every resource I found will have this intention. So in that moment, shadow stack could deploy very smoothly in theory. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I can say now. <laughs> but again, I, I know it's very annoying for the distro guy. Anyway. Let me move on, otherwise I don't have too much time. Okay, the next big one issue is the uh, labeling skin, which you may most have a lot of questions around that. Our design goal is we don't want to LTO as mandatory for the CFI uh, landing pad, yeah. Since it will limit the scope of landing pad, I mean, uh, some program is just not work with LTO. I mean, for some embedded project or some program written with lots of assembly code, just not work with LTO again. Yeah, so the, the, the first design goal is we don't want to require LTO. So what are we trying to do? Okay, using the hash of the function signature as a label. And the spin of the function signature, okay, you may 
uh, you may some something may come to your mind. Okay, the the C plus plus already has defined a one rule for that, which is the Itanium C plus plus ABI. So okay, awesome. They will use that. But oh yeah, here is a but. Uh, C++ is really, 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 really complicated. I mean, we optimize typically to sort at the beginning, hey, we just use that, and then we don't need to filter in base gates on what, what the rule is. But we found uh, there are some interesting issues around the C++ first uh, micro inheritance. Second, covariant return type. And also, the main goal rule is not really compatible even between the C++. I mean, it has some evolution between the C++ standard, yeah. And also, C and the C++ is not really compatible, yeah. It, I mean, I already know that before I doing this work, but yeah, it's still <laughs> not in. Okay, some detail, I guess I don't have detail, uh, too much time to describe that. But because you could imagine we are trying to use in the function signature, including the return type. So a quick question is, okay, if we encode in the A, A foo and the B foo as a signature, then what if the C, he multiple inheritances from A and the B, What's the signature for him? I don't know. Serious, we don't know. So we give up in this case. But anyway, I don't. I won't talk too much detail. I will put the slide if the the conference and uh, you can read more if you are really interested. Yeah. Okay. Same for the copper and the written title. Just give you a quick impression. What is copper and the written type? A function, virtual function the uh, derived class can return different type, but still overwritten the same function. The, the limitation is the, the return type must, uh, I don't know what to, how to describe that, in the same uh, inherent hierarchy, and it must be the first, so that it can, you can use different return type, yeah. But anyway, from the language aspect, those pointers must be compatible. Yeah, so you could imagine if we just use in the return type and uh, the function type, both function will generate uh, two different label, but in C++ they may come from same function, same same call side. Then which label we should place in the call side? Okay, no answer to me. So we need to find a way to fix that. And uh, also, I have mentioned, okay, there is some incompatible between the C++. One particular example is before the C++ 11, we don't have encoding the exception spec in the main going rule. What's mean? The no through keyword uh, didn't involve in the main going rule before the C++ 17. So it's I mean, it makes the uh, main going or the label unstable between the different C++ uh, standard. So let's, we will try, what we are trying to do is, okay, we, are, we want to make the stable skin is much stable and compatible if possible, yeah. And the latest uh, issue is, okay, C++ and the C is not really, Different. One particular e example is a widen chart. It's a building type for C++, and uh, it's a main going as a W. But okay, for C, no, it's come from the header file. It's by type define, and the mean be uh, int or long, depending on your target. So okay, how we main go that? Mm, we need some special rule for that. Okay, so so far we have added a few 
special rule to fix in those cases we mentioned before. But anyway, I, I won't go through the details. So yeah, again, you, if you are interested, you can read the slide later. Okay, next. Okay, I still have three minutes. The plan and the state for the ABI changes. Uh, for the ABI change, we have four things. The GNU property, labeling skin, linker realization, and the POT. Since, yeah, we need something new in the ABI side. First, we leverage the GNU property, which is used in the same mechanism fund as the x86 and the h 4 We believe using that way should be most reasonable since it could make the GDBC implementation much easier. I mean, we can build a sort of common infrastructure and use together rather than every target build their own one. And uh, yeah, let's uh, the what how look like the for the GNU property. Well, yeah, what I want to say is this device look like that and the x86. Yeah, it's very similar. Yeah. Okay, the next one is the uh, labeling skin. We have introduced the most complicated one for the function signature based. But actually currently we also have designed another uh, labeling skin called un unlabeled skin. Uh, why? We, uh, the, the unlabeled skin is always using the universal label. You, you may think why. Because around this world, we still have a bunch of legacy code. One very bad example is, okay, the, one of the version you can find in the network for the dry stone didn't have right function declaration. <laughs> yeah, and uh, according to the older C standard, he will give you some uh, function prototype according to the language standard. But in most of the time, that is not what you expect. But according to our mechanism, it will compute to result a wrong label and then they encounter a label mismatch issue. So yeah, let's kind of fall back for, for legacy programs. Yeah, that's why we designed two mechanisms here. Also, another change with ABI for link realization is kind of a special thing in the resurfy, but yeah, I know other target has a link realization, but a resurfy just do more uh, aggressive. I mean, uh, for other targets, uh, the linker relation will maybe just replace with an OP. But for resurfy, we will just remove the instruction from the binary. Yeah. So here, we will try to remove those unused landing pad if possible during the static linker time. Of course, it comes with strong constraint. I mean, the symbol must be a local symbol. Otherwise, it's made taken by outside. And also, you must make sure the symbol address isn't taken anywhere. So it should check by some relocation. Make sure only the function call relocation has reference this symbol. Yeah, that's what we have. But yeah, actually, I didn't write the spec yet. But we will have that. And uh, you could imagine that could save few call sites and uh, the reduce the uh, entry point of the function. Yeah. So yeah, it's good for both. Finally, the PLT. PLT must define new format because every PLT entry for now is the indirect jump. <laughs> yeah. So for unlabeled skin, it must press a landing pad since you may take address from the PLT entry. So yeah, you need a linear pad. And for function signature one, okay, you need to insert two more instructions. One is a landing pad. In case some, someone is jump to this PLT entry indirectly. And another one, you need to set up the landing pad again, because if someone is not jump to this, uh, if someone jump to this PLT entry, without indirect way. I mean, direct jump to this PLT. Okay, 
That means he didn't prepare for the landing pair pad value. So you must set up a one in within the POD entry. Yeah. And uh, finally, that's the part. Okay, a little bit over time. So let me quick. Currently, we have implemented everything, but not really everything. We have implemented the simplest one in the GNU toolchain and the L and we have also implemented something. And the Linux and the QMU support is review in progress and upstream in progress. And uh, our optimized tick goal is we are targeting GCC 15. Yeah, and of course we hope this can happen next year across the entire the software stack from the kernel, GDVC, and the toolchain, if possible. And then, wait one or two more years, we will have the hardware, yeah, in theory, yeah, again. Okay, that's all my presentation, thank you. If any feedback question, you can find me later, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you everyone.